One of the questions I get the most here at the studio is regarding my journey as an artist and how I got here. And two of the things that people seem to be the most surprised by is that I did voluntarily move here from a beautiful tropical island and that uh, my previous career was actually in investment finance. But I am getting ahead of myself. In today's video, I want to share with you a glimpse of my artist origin story, if you will. So there are a lot of experiences, memories, and stories that are embedded in my work. And a lot of them are directly linked to my upbringing and or ultimately my search for my true calling in art. Our story begins in the small tropical island of Puerto Rico, um, which I like to think of it as a magical place. Uh, this is, you know, I was grew up in an environment in which there is a blend of different cultures, ethnicities, traditions. Um, I mean, here you have a mix of the first people of the island, pre-Columbus, they were the Baino Indians. You have the Yoruba and Igbo people from Nigeria and the west coast of Africa. Um, add to the mix, you have settlers and conquistadors from Spain and other parts of Europe. And then last but not least, uh, the folks from the United States joined the mix in the last century or so. And then even in my own DNA, there's actually a reflection of my mixed heritage as well, as I have different ethnicities in there too. Um, so add to all that, that uh, I got very lucky that, you know, the family that I was raised in, um, they actually put, besides, you know, an emphasis on all these different cultures, they also put an emphasis on education, on learning about other countries, um, as well as, you know, being a hard worker and being able to put, give your all, if you will, uh, to running your own enterprise. In this case, they had a small business. So speaking of the family business, so decades prior to my existence, uh, my grandparents founded a small business called uh, Poster Products Inc. and they special specialized in printmaking. Um, specifically, one of their focuses was screen printing. This is before the age of the internet and widely available printers everywhere, right? And um, it was here that I first interacted with artists, um, industrial and uh, professional quality art materials, fine art in general. I mean, they had a little bit of everything. They had the workshops, they had the equipment, they had the supplies, um, and of course they had the art. So it was definitely a wonderful place. I mean, there were so many memories and so many things that were formative about spending uh, time with my grandparents and their business. But there's one story that sticks out that I'd like to share with you um, in an effort to be somewhat brief and I mean, I have like 500 stories, so. <laughs> so I was lucky enough to have access to art materials um, pretty consistently growing up. Um, I mean, they may have been the budget, cheapy kids version, but I mean, I was lucky and I was happy. One of my favorite materials at the time was uh, coloring pencils. And I remember there was this one time my grandpa actually made an exception. I must have been nine or 10 at the time. Yeah, somewhere around there. And generally, I could not use the fine art materials that were at the store because those were for customers. But he did have some uh, some different sample items. And I think the pencils, the Prismacolors in this case, were running out or they had been sharpened so many times there wasn't much to hold on. So it was one of those like, hey, do you want to try these? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and to put it in context compared to what I was using, I mean, these had way more vibrant colors. I mean, they glided very smoothly. Blending them was so much easier than what I was used to at that point. And being able to use artist grade materials, it was a game changer. Like, this is a whole nother universe. This might as well might as well have been a completely different medium. Like it was it was that different. Um, so I remember as the as the story went. I don't remember just kind of like begging, like, <laughs> can I use some more of the stuff? So gradually they gave in little by little and um, I was able to use alcohol markers. I was able to use watercolors, oils, acrylics, and um, in limited amounts, it wasn't like you can open all the stuff, right? Because again, these are a professional grade, but little by little I could access more and more. And all this was before the internet was a thing or I had been taking formal art classes. So we're talking about thousands of hours <laughs> on my own, fumbling about, um, trying to figure out these new art materials without any guidance or instruction. I mean, if I could change anything, I wish I could go back in time and spend a little more time perhaps with my grandpa and ask him about his time as an artist before he became a 
full-blown business owner. Um, he's from a generation or an artistic discipline or practice, I should say, way before there were printers. <laughs> so all these printed materials for different companies, these were all hand cut and screen printed posters and different things that they were doing. So I wish I could have asked him a little bit more about the things he made, either for fine art or commercial, and learn a little bit more about um, basically how he got there. That's one bit of my history that hopefully someday I'll uncover a little bit more of, but I'm thankful to at least have spent the time that we did and I mean, the access that I got because I was there and that's what they were focused on. And luckily their line of business was art related. I mean, can you imagine if it meant something else like seafood or furniture? I don't know, who knows what would have happened, right? <laughs> So despite having a family that encouraged my artistic inclinations, the message was clear. I needed to pursue a career um, that would consistently pay my bills, and if I wanted to do art, perhaps I could do it as a hobby. So as my mom liked to point out, and there were wisdoms in her words, I get now why she was saying this, but um, she would basically say, would you rather make art and be dependent on whether or not a gallery is willing to take it and then sell it? Or would you rather have the skills necessary in order to own a gallery and then make art if you choose to? Hard to argue with that one. <laughs> and so I decided to go to school, to business school, um, for business administration and marketing. And whenever I could have an elective that I could take art, you betcha I would do it. I would also take any workshop that I could that had to do specifically with painting, was most of it, although I did some woodworking, some woodworking, all kinds of stuff, anything I could get my hands off just about. And so after college, I decided to move to North Carolina, which is a story for another day, and I entered the corporate world, specifically the investments finance industry. Finance industry. So I really enjoyed working with clients in a fast-paced environment, learning about the market, um, how does it all work, right? Um, but the caveat or the downside to it was it could be highly stressful depending on what was going on, especially with the economy. Um, and then on top of that, there were a lot of repetitive tests that came with it. So over time, the side effect that it had was that my creativity actually started to dwindle. So when I first got here to the States, there was a lot of like, oh yeah, I make my job, but I don't take it home. I can do art at home. And then eventually it was like, no, I'm still thinking about work and what am I going to do tomorrow? And, you know, task lists and to do's and all those things. And eventually the creative side was just harder and harder to a point where I just kind of felt stuck. Right. And I just knew I needed that. I needed that creative outlet in order to process all kinds of complex emotions. Um, not not necessarily related to work, but also my personal life. Um, there was some grief, there was anxiety, there was a lot of stuff going on. And creativity had always helped me work through it. And not having that outlet, it was definitely having a negative effect. So I knew that something had to change. And so I reached the breaking point. And um, I had to spend a lot of time in introspection and try to figure out what's my true calling. I knew it had to do with art, but I wasn't sure how I could do, like how could I pay my bills consistently with it. So I decided to have a transitional period because after all, I wasn't in a financial situation to, to straight up quit, nor would I have done so. I mean, I still had so much to learn. So instead of what I did is I networked and talked with other artists, um, asking them not so much about their art making, but more on the practice or the business side of art and trying to see how do you make a living from this thing, right? Um, so it was during this time that I started doing art events, I had my first solo show, um, I started selling my work, and then on top of that I was also reinvesting or investing a lot into even more education, more workshops, more training, more skill development, because I knew, I mean, if I'm, if I'm going to give this a try, a good old-fashioned try, I can't just straight up go into it when I feel like I'm just a newbie. So I had to give it some time, and then at the end of 2019, that's when I decided to take the plunge. Talk about great timing, because we all know what happened right after, right? But <laughs> something called the pandemic, I think. Um, but yeah, anyways, I have more stories for you regarding that transitional period, but I'm going to leave that for another day. Fast forward to now, uh, my studio is currently at Artspace, which is in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. And this is what I do full time. This is where I do uh, the vast majority of my work. This is basically like my gallery space. This is where I sell it as well. And where I greet visitors and collectors and 
I really, really, really love it here. So I feel very lucky that I was able to get here actually summer of 2020. So not too long after I had left the corporate world. It should come as no surprise then that I am passionate about exchanging stories, connecting with others through art. I mean, when you look at my work, my aim is actually to transmit feelings of joy and playfulness, but also a sense of harmony in many ways throughout the different things that have happened in my life. Um, you know, whenever things, especially when things get really rocky, art has been essentially like an anchor for me, a sanctuary, if you will, and I'd like to, to be the same for other folks that you know, have my art. Um, or interact with it in some way or another. So um, whether it's painting or ceramics, I like to embed some of these stories, memories, histories within those layers, uh, within those textures. And I want to invite you know the viewer to discover what's in the work itself. So it's not just a, this is what you see, this is what you get. Once you get closer, you actually start seeing things from other layers. Um, you start seeing you know more textures that you can react to. and try to decode on, you know, from your end, what some of these stories are. I mean, some of them are so personal and so vulnerable that I'm always surprised when somebody actually tells me, this reminds me of X, Y, Z. And many times it's actually aligned to a story of something that happened to me too. I don't know. I feel like art is magic, but I think you all know that already. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.